Hi there again everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Thanks for joining me. I know that I haven't had a lot of uh, videos posted up recently and for that I very much apologize. I have had a crazy travel schedule uh, and unfortunately it's not going to get a lot better until August. But at that time you should start seeing a lot more videos coming through on the Type 7 project, uh, a little bit on this Skipjack project, the Conning Tower project, uh, Nautilus build up and much, much more. But in the meantime, uh, I wanted to kind of share with you a little bit more about 3D printing. Looking over here, you can see my uh, 3D printing uh, sort of station. Uh, I have two 3D printers. I've got a, an old MakerBot uh, 3D printer. That was my first one. I got that about three or four years ago. And this is uh, my newer one. This is a TAS-5 uh, Lulzbot. It's got dual extruders uh, and a much larger build volume. But you can see it's actually a pretty simple setup. I've got uh, the 3D printer there on the left, my laptop uh, sitting up on top of an airtight uh, housing for my filament, uh, and that's pretty well it. That's all you need to get going. So what I want to share with you is uh, a little project that I have that I find is absolutely perfect for 3D printing. Now this is a, a very large skipjack uh, that a customer has sent me and this is not going to be a complete build up basically I'm just going to be mounting uh, this incredibly awesome OTW three and a half inch cylinder that's uh, Bob Dimack's new smaller style um, uses the same technology the same setup as his larger four inch units uh, but it'll be much more applicable for a, a much wider range of models but what I need to do is get this thing mounted uh, inside the cylinder and to do that I need to get some bulkheads in there that the cylinder will sit on that'll centralize it in the hull uh, and lock it down. So normally what I would do uh, if I did not have a 3D printer is I would uh, out of probably quarter inch plastic stock uh, I would cut a template and then cut it with a jigsaw to conform to the shape of the hull uh, and then allow for the uh, cylinder to sit on the inside and I'm going to mount this probably just below center, something kind of like this, uh, because I want more room up top for foam, uh, not that I need it in this particular model because it's huge, um, and less for, for weight because it's much more compact. Uh, but that's a lot of work, um, and it's a big mess, and there's a lot of wasted material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate uh, a file that will allow the printer to print out these bulkheads for me, uh, theoretically in the perfect shape with no wasted materials, and I don't have to do anything other than draft it very quickly, which I'll show you in a minute. So all I've done to get started is I've taken some measurements, and in the front here you can see that the width of the hull at this point is 188 millimeters. The diameter of the cylinder is 91 millimeters. Now I'm going to slightly undersize the uh, outside diameter and slightly undersize the, or sorry, oversize the inside diameter just to make sure that everything fit nicely and to take into account the tolerances uh, of the extruder. All right, what I am going to be using is a program called Google SketchUp and it is a completely free program that you can get online and I'll put the URL uh, at the bottom of the screen there for you. It's extremely powerful and it's extremely easy to use. Uh, and for me, uh, even though I'm familiar with some other 3D drafting programs such as Blender, which is another free 3D printing program, um, I find that Google SketchUp is probably the best for drafting very fast, simple shapes, uh, even though it's capable of much more. So I use uh, Google SketchUp for that. And what I'm going to do here uh, is show you just kind of how quickly it can be.
Okay, here we are back at the uh, 3D printing station. I got my laptop set up, and what I've done is I've imported the file directly into uh, what's called a slicing program uh, called Cura, and that came with the printer. Uh, a lot of this software you're going to find with the 3D printing community is all open source. It's very much a community about sharing and collaborative uh, work together, which is actually really, really cool. So what you can see here is the, uh, the part itself sitting on the build plate. Um, I've got an estimated build time here of 3 hours and 14 minutes. Um, these guys kind of, they're, it's, it's not always very accurate, uh, but it's pretty close. It gives you kind of an idea about where it's going to set uh, up or end up. Uh, I'm going to activate the uh, controller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my second extruder. I am going to set my extruding temperature, 245 degrees. I'm going to be printing this in ABS plastic. That's a very tough uh, plastic. I like it for building um, structural parts. Uh, the other one that's commonly used is PLA plastic, actually a corn derivative which is pretty cool uh, all biodegradable and um, smells great when it's uh, when it's actually being extruded it smells like popcorn which is very cool so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna wait for the extruders uh, to heat up and then basically once the extruders are warm uh, you can see we're 78 or 80 degrees here right now we're gonna hit print Make sure that uh, the print starts out okay. And then I'm going to go about working on other stuff. And that's the joy of this. Uh, you know, drafting this part probably took me, I don't know, 15 minutes uh, or something like that. Um, hit print and it's done. So 15 minute investment, no wasted effort, no wasted material, exactly what you need down to the millimeter. So we're going to let this warm up and. Uh, Rejoin it here in a minute. Okay, it has been maybe three or four minutes. You can see that my extruder temperature is up to 245 degrees. My build plate uh, is coming up to about 83. It's going to ultimately reach about 100. And the idea behind this is that once that plastic is laid down on there, that warm plate will stop it from warping, uh, which is really important for big flat parts like the ones that we are going to uh, put down. So what I'm going to do here, I am just going to extrude a little bit of plastic just to get it flowing. There we go, right out the bottom. This just comes off there. So we're all set to go. Hit print. And you let the machine do the work. So it's going through an auto calibration cycle right now. Uh, you can see on the bottom there, two print heads. So I could print in two different color plastics or two different types of plastic so that you can print support material that can be um, dissolved later on so that you don't see it. So this is laying up a border around the part, sort of defining its uh, outer edges. This part here was just where the plastic was just getting extruded, um, and it's not important because this isn't actually part of the part, it's more just for reference. You can see how big this is actually going to be. That it would have been a pain to cut all of that you know, with a saw and drill out holes. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to leave it off for a little bit. As I mentioned, we're shooting for somewhere around three hours of uh, total build time. So I'm going to go about some other things that I have to do and we'll come back and revisit 
the part here maybe halfway through so you can see how it looks. Okay, so we are a little bit over an hour into the print here. Uh, you can see it's printing, um, you know, like a grid pattern on the inside there. And the reason for that is that the uh, interior of the 3D parts uh, I designed to be uh, somewhat hollow. So it's got all of these voids inside. That saves on material, saves on weight, um, but mostly it just uh, makes it for a faster uh, and easier print. So it's going to continue to build up the thickness there and then it's going to build up the, uh, the walls that the cylinder is going to nestle on. And uh, we'll revisit it here again in another couple hours. Okay, and here we have the finished uh, products. These are the uh, two bulkheads, upper and lower. Uh, on the build plate, this is all cooled down. And kind of the neat thing about this is once it's cooled down, um, they shrink at different rates. And so now this, this just pops right off, uh, even though that plastic was adhered directly to the, um, to the build plate. So now that I got this, um, we're going to go drop it in the hull. We'll see how well everything lines up. And I'll try and do this one handed and see how easy this actually was. So you can see there's just a tiny bit of a gap uh, around the sides there, but that'll be filled with um, you know adhesive, uh, likely some resin. Um, There we go. Just about perfect. That cylinder sits in there nice and snugly. Uh, it'll probably actually be up a little further, something like that. But at any rate, uh, matches up, you know, with the uh, with the hull there. Um, the upper piece will go um, across the top, and that'll keep the upper hull stiff, and also make sure that our edges line up so uh, only thing left to do is do the back section there and um, figure out some hold downs but like I said I just wanted to kind of show you how that 3D printing thing worked uh, it's really simple I really really enjoy it I learn more you know every day and certainly this is a very crude application for the technology um, you can do some very very beautiful and um, intricate things um, you know, including some things like this. This is a, a Sequest master patterns that I messed around with uh, a little while ago. But uh... thanks again for joining me uh, on this little short introduction to 3D printing and how much I enjoy using it. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. I'll be posting up a lot more videos in the months to come. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Thank you.